Hey, Matt Faulkner, it's Eugene. Hello, Eugene. And we are here with Save World Make Art podcast mm -hmm. at a very nice coffee shop known as White Pine. Mm. Let's check it out. This is White Pine. We'll do a 360. And back to you. So White Pine Coffee Shop in Oxford. We're going to go back to the back area. It's a little quieter and they're not making as much coffee and we'll talk. Yeah. So here we are in the back room of the pine, White Pine Roasters in Oxford, Michigan. Gina and I are hanging out. We're, we're conversing back and forth about where we've been, what we've been doing. So I, I'm, I'm going to bring it back over to Eugene. You, you did some pretty a heavy good thing for our community. What, what was going on last Friday night? Matt, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, there was an art exhibition in Royal Oak at the Atelier where you and I have done some teaching and some presentations. And uh, it was called the Figure Invitational. And you and I both have work in that exhibition. Mm -hmm. And how many people were there? So we had over 100 people at the opening for sure. Uh, I don't have an official count, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say between one and 150 for sure. It was a three hour exhibition. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll splice some photos into this point so that you guys can look at the photos mm. of the crowd at the exhibition. Awesome. And didn't you, you said that there were three elders that were uh, acknowledged and given certificates of merit. Who were they? Yes, actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. They received a Lifetime Achievement Award mm. uh, in honor of the great Russell Keeter, my mentor, uh, to keep his name alive and to pay tribute to three as I like to put it, elder statesmen mm -hmm. who have contributed greatly, not just to the world of art, but to the art in and within the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, Armin Mersman, mm -hmm. who is the mentor for Todd Burroughs, the uh, proprietor at the Atelier, and then Sergio Dejuski, who is my uh, teacher, sculpture teacher, mm -hmm. and who has done a million uh, great commissions in and around Detroit. And then, of course, a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Hubert Massey. Tell us about your experience with Hubert. I first met Hubert, I think it was back in either 1999 or 2000. My teacher, Glenn Michaels, was had seen his work and was uh, like infatuated by his work because Glenn, who was a mosaicist uh, and also a painter, but he was also really into uh, the human figure. How how do we, you know, all things come from nature. Nature is the great teacher and the human body is this great design. And so he saw Hubert's work and the fact that he was doing um, the uh, painting on uh, uh, fresco. Yeah, you know, this, this ancient, this really old Michelangelo's technique. And he was like, this guy's doing fresco and it's massive. You know, we, I want to go see him. And I was like, you're going to call him up and we'll, yeah, I, I know a friend who knows, knows him. We're just going to go there. And I was like, okay. And we did. <laughs> and he's a delight. Hubert is a massive talent and a massive big warm heart. And he is just so kind and open and giving. Um, I just want to hang out with him. We're going to do that, right? We're going to uh, like hang with him. That's someday. right. We got to, we got to make that happen. Uh, you and me and Hubert hanging out at a cafe, kind of like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Let's just sort of show you what's behind us. There's a, a really cool uh, machine of some sort that is related to coffee, and I'm not quite sure exactly how you would use this particular yeah, there's device. All these antique ruined but the it's pretty interesting. Pretty cool. So it's like a little history display of coffee on this ladder um, in the back portion of the white pine coffee roasters here. First and century coffee. So they got all kinds of books of it. Yeah, coffee. and they actually roast coffee right here on site. And fine teas. And so let's take a look at yours that you're drinking. So what did they mm -hmm. do to this? This, this is tea, but it doesn't look like What do they like call it? They're calling it a London fog. Yeah, yeah. 
but how do they make it? I don't know. They well, they, you know, the same way they make a latte. Must put the tea in it and do some kind of. I don't, I don't know what. I'm happy. So, it's a magical tea for a magical man, mm. Matt Faulkner. Uh, but uh, you know something else that's magical. Just doing the podcast with you mm -hmm. uh, for the last several years. You know, we celebrated. I don't know if you know this, but our last episode, which was episode ten of season two, oh, that's our thirtieth episode. Mm. So this is episode thirty-one. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping it going, yeah. keeping it real. You know, we want to, uh, you know, not bore you guys, but we want to at least allow you into uh, what it might be like to hang out with us when we're just talking art. Mm -hmm. So we talk art, we talk coffee, we talk tea. And so the Atelier exhibition, now your work is at the exhibition. Do you want to tell everybody uh, a little bit about what you chose to put in? I put in work from a couple of my books. Uh, one of them was work from my uh, book I did with my wife called Groundhog's Dilemma. Was that in there? I'm pretty, no, maybe not because that was animals. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't human figures. I, uh, oh, I put sketches in for uh, one book called The Pirate Meets the Queen. And I put um, some anatomy work that uh, my teacher Glenn, when I was in my late thirties was like, you need to do more anatomy work. And he's like, I know I'm not a professional. Leave me alone. And he's like, no, you need to draw more anatomy. So I did. And these are some of the drawings. Uh, and then lastly, I, I said that. yeah, yeah. And then uh, I did a, uh, some preliminary art I put in there from another book I did called uh, A Taste of Colored Water. Beautiful. So, yeah. That's beautiful. You know, I had my students from Oakland University show up with their sketchbooks. I turned the art opening into an assignment for them. There's nothing better than being forced by your teacher to have to go somewhere Absolutely. that's going to actually bring some culture into your world. And that's what my students experienced. They got to meet some of the artists. They got to, you know, draw from the art, uh, jot down some notes and experience just, you know, what it is to be in an art exhibition like that. So they picked uh, your piece. We talked about your work after the fact. And, uh, you know, what some of the things that uh, were in your illustrations and um, I think all of them, okay. all the pieces that you just mentioned. Cool. So uh, it was cool to see the students uh, choosing your work to That's try cool. and draw from. And, you know, so that was a good mentor move. You do. You, you always let you have like it's in your genes. It's in your DNA. You, you were born a teacher. You're probably like three years old and you're like, draw the fibula that way you know so when you bring in you, you honor the elders hold on pointed at me because uh, it's about me you you honored the elders and you you honored the students but you insisted that they come because you know how students are uh you know i just want to hang out and look at my phone no get your butt over here and participate in this community and you insisted that they do that that's all great uh, mentor moves and i'm i'm I just want to acknowledge that. So we have an agreement. We can. I'll only hang out with him if he praises me for everything I do. And I will and hang with him if he buys me London Fogs, which he did. Take another sip. Little, yeah, there we go. There it is. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's delicious. Let me toss in one. Yes. And I was not at the show. Uh-oh. That's right. You know, I was a little miffed. I thought, Matt, damn it. You've got to be at this show. We have to. We have to be there to represent what you call great me names too, cursing and stuff. Yeah, I don't want to repeat okay, what I actually know. said. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I said I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you went to a very uh, amazing event. Do you want to speak about that briefly? I just do, kind yeah, of just give quick. people a quick rundown. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago, nineteen early nineteen ninety, I went to my first one. It's a a men's conference, and now when you say men's conference, now people are like, mm, you mean like bad men's conference and <laughs> you know which ones I might be talking no this was um poetry music dance for six days straight and um the poet Robert Bly was the person who, who started this and it's in Minnesota and it's called the Minnesota Men's Conference look them up on uh Facebook they have a great page you'll see a lot of comments now about the conference you'll see a lot of picture of very happy men working hard to get real with their own souls and how they relate to other people. A lot of beautiful poetry. We stayed up late, we sang, we danced, we 
did poetry, we, we prayed, then we went to bed really late, we got up really early, and we did it all again for six days. It was crazy making in a good way. And I was just so happy mm -hmm. to have been there, but I did miss my friend's uh, show, and uh, I regret that. It was your show. Oh, well, our show. Was it was just my show. Well, but you know what? Creative, I know that, that I know that the um, men's conference does help revitalize uh, your soul, your inner person. Because the first thing you said to me on the phone when I talked to you as you came back, you said, "We're going to turn my garage into an art studio." Yeah, little dojo, little. Gym. And that was something that we just kind of, you know, threw the idea around loosely. Uh, because right now, you know, it's it's being used more as a storage unit by family members. Yeah. Uh, but the idea which is, of which is fine, which is fine. We got to do our thing. The idea of removing all that stuff and actually putting art students in there and right. teaching some classes, uh, going to this conference seems like it helped it you to sort of see or vis visualize that happening in the future. Right. You know, you it, what it really got me in touch with is the idea that um, there is a gift in giving. Learn. I need to learn what that is, how much I get when I give, you know, and when I get in touch with that, I just want to give some more. I also want to learn how to get, it, you know, um, be gracious and receiving, you know, so. Speaking of giving, process. Matt gave me this bracelet. Tell us about this bracelet. That is a, a steel bracelet from the Sikh community, S I K H, and it's a, um, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's you know very much. It's uh, made out of steel. Uh, it was given to me by a young man, a Sikh man, and um, it's a um, dedication to um, the warrior spirit inside. Way old. I know there's like a lot of new age kind of interpretations of that statement, the warrior. But really, it's it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years from the Sikh community. And basically, it says we want to point the saint outward and the warrior inward. You look for the faults in yourself, not in others. And so when I put that bracelet on, I'm reminding myself that I can I have that kind of steel in me and gentleness. Thank you, Matt. Yep. Well, uh, here we are at White Pine. We're not going to do a, too long of an extended. Oh, and I talk, I gave you that bracelet because yes. you remind me of that. that. What you do reminds me of that. That's why I hang out with him. This all guy. I have to do is buy him a tea. This guy. And then he gives me presents and you. he says all these things to me. <laughs> Eugene. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I just want to say one thing to you, Matt. And the thing is, I want to say is, on my shirt it says yes yes, yes. because not only is that a my favorite band of all time mm -hmm. but it's a great word to to think about because i would say that more often as humans we tend to say no to things yep. before we say yes yep. but uh there is a school of thought that when things come down your way uh to uh gravitate gravitate more towards the the positive and the yes in the risk taking and good things will happen. Um, it doesn't mean that you might not, you know, fall down and have to pick yourself up and brush yourself off. But in doing so, a yes turns into something even greater. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, how often it's so easy to say no. It's always easy to crawl onto a colleague couch and get involved in my social networking. But um, so many gifts come from uh, just getting involved, just listening to that voice that says, just get out there and go have a cup of tea with Eugene, you know? Um, so I hope all of you who are watching this, all three, five, <laughs> maybe 10 of you will think that and come and have a cup of tea with us. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's it from White Pine. Yep. I'm Eugene Clark. And I'm Matt Falcon. And we are Save, Save World, World Make Art. Make Art. Monday. See you guys. Bye-bye, everybody. Did it. Still recording? <laughs>